Hello. Good morning. We continue on. Wrestling with Rosenberg, WrestleMania weekend. Uh, everyone's been asking. We're here. And now I'm super excited uh, because as the biggest heart mark in history, I have the wonderfully talented and beautiful Natty Neidhart. Nat Natalia, how are you? <laughs> I'm good. Thank you so much for having me. Of course. First of all, before we even get to wrestling talk and we get to heart talk and all the things that are to talk about with you, yeah. um, let's talk about your newfound fame from this television show. Um, you're incredibly appealing on the show. As I've, as I've told the Bellas a, a couple weeks ago, I believe the biggest winners on the show are you, the Bellas, Trinity. Um, I think Jimmy Uso is also... Oh, he's funny. I think he gets a, it's a big win for him also. Yeah. But, I mean, it's interesting because your original storyline was sort of based on, you know, real life of not necessarily getting the shine that yeah. you deserved. And then, as often as the case with wrestling, um, art, uh, life imitates art. Yeah. And now you really are getting all this shine. So, what's, I, it, what's it been like? It's been really cool. It's been like a trip. It's been one year since we started doing Total Divas. And we're going into our second season now. We're almost done filming the second season. And... It's been like the experience and opportunity of a lifetime. It was the biggest break of my career. And it really is funny because I never, I feel like I never would have gotten to do Total Divas if I wasn't an underdog. And being an underdog paid off. If I had been given everything and handed everything, I might not have been a good fit for the show. Were so, you surprised that you were a fit? Like, I did, did part of you. I was blown away when I got asked to do it. I, I was like, why me? I mean, not that I didn't want to do it. I was, I was so excited to do it. I thought I won the lottery. But I didn't think that, like, when you look at all the other girls that they picked to be on the show, I was like, well, what, why would they want me? Because yeah, you could have easily, and me too, as a fan who follows you, could have easily seen you being someone who got looked over for it. And yeah. they would have went with someone newer. I and always felt that way. I mean, just to be completely blunt, I always felt like I was just the wrestler. I was Natty the wrestler. And I was wrestling was what I was good at and what I am good at. And it's what it's in my heart and it's what my family does. And it's just Natty is the wrestler. And... And I felt like sometimes they never saw past any of my other, like, that I could do so many other things. I can walk a red carpet. I can go do charity work. I can be an ambassador for WWE. I can do all these other things and be, you know, do these outside appearances. And I felt for so long that they just looked at me as being, like, this hardcore wrestler, which is crazy now because the tables have totally turned. And now I do more ambassador work than anybody else. I do more media. I do more appearances. I do tons of outside projects. And I'm showing that you can be multi-talented. Well, also, you know, to again, to be totally blunt, it's not like... Um it's not like you're hard on the eyes. Like it's almost like as if you probably had a feeling of based on where you were and you're such the wrestler and don't get me wrong, the, the divas are quite beautiful, but it's almost like you're being pigeonholed in this position where it's like you can't also be the pretty girl, which you can, if you weren't a pro wrestler, is what you would have been in, in life regularly. Does that make sense? Yeah, I mean, I think that, but the crazy thing is, is that being a wrestler right now is really in, but that's what I was always, that's what I was. And so now with the success of Ronda Rousey and, you know, the fact that she is, I mean, she's somebody that I look up to and somebody that I like. When I walk to the ring, when I walk to the ring, I just, I envision that I'm her. And I'm like, I'm going to go in there and I'm going to start throwing suplexes like nobody's business. And there's going to be no funny business with me. There's going to be no, you know, goofy, haha. It's going to be all business with me because I'm going to throw, I'm going to, I think about, the things that run through my head when I'm walking down the ramp before I get in the ring is like, I channel Dynamite Kid. I channel, I think about my grandfather. I think about Ronda Rousey. And I'm like, I'm going to go in there and kick some ass. And now wrestling is really in. Let's right, Look at Daniel Bryan. Look at the Yes Movement. It's like, being a wrestler is really cool. But that's what I was this whole time. But then in between, I've been working on being everything else too because it's fun to be able to do, do it all. Well, and you want it. And let's, I mean, and also there's a job. And you want to always... You always want to be diverse. And valuable yeah, to the and, company. And you, I like doing everything. I like knowing that I can speak, that I can walk a red carpet. Last night I host our Wrestle, hosted our WrestleMania kickoff party. Um, we, we do so much. We, we you know lead pep rallies and we talk to kids about everything. I met these kids the other day at a children's hospital. It was crazy you know, that I got to like change these kids' lives. But at the end of the day, like I know why I'm here and I know that Originally, it's because I was a wrestler, and now, for a while there, too, I was almost like, gosh, I need to do something different. I need to dance. I need to 
come up with a wild character I need to and, now and then like, and now your thing is your gimmick is being you my gimmick is just being me and I also love I love 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 that you can see me on Total Divas being anything but perfect you know what and people will be like well man you did you know you're doing stuff on that show it's a little bit wild or wacky or off the wall I mean Hulk Hogan came up to me the other day you're getting a first ever okay so give me give me this what did Hulk uh, tell you? what did he tell Hulk you? Hogan came up to me the other day we were at Raw and he goes Man, I, I love that show, Total Divas. And he didn't say it in a southern accent like Michael Hayes, but he was just like... <laughs> 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 he said, um, did you really poop on the bus? And I was like, Hulk, I'm not going to confirm or deny that. <laughs> and he just burst out laughing. He goes, man, when I saw that going on on the show, he's like, I just wanted to like tune in. And First of all, it's hilarious to me that Hulk would ask that question, seeing as he is the godfather of reality wrestling shows right <laughs> hulk should understand the business at no. this point as well as anyone well and it's funny because i um i like i said i wouldn't confirm or deny it <laughs> i didn't mean to break any rules on brian's bus brian's rules on his bus were ridiculous i, I think he was just getting a little testy before wrestlemania like getting a little temperamental and <laughs> listen hold on for the, for the record we are very this is a wrestling with rosenberg is a very smart show and I am now on a on, a, on an unscripted reality show myself on Monday nights, up against Raw, unfortunately, um, on VH1 called This Is Hot 97 every Monday night at 10:30. And I'll make sure you watch it. I'll, I'll DM oh, it. I'll DM, I want to check it out. I'll DM you the info. Ours is a a little bit more of a wink to camera than yours is, but I know when I watch every week, I am very clear about which storylines were naturally there and which ones they were like, <laughs> hmm, we need to have this thing happen. You'd be surprised at some of them that were well, things that weren't like we okay i mean i know see it's interesting now finally in wrestling i've gotten to a point where in interviews people will be pretty comfortable talking about what's real and yeah. what's perceived but with the reality show it's a little bit more complex because so is there legitimate off-air heat between you and summer Rae? <laughs> you know what I, the craziest thing is is that i do respect summer like i respect the fact that she she trained in NXT. She worked hard down there. And, like, when I'm in the ring with her, I enjoy our matches. I enjoy competing with her. She's fun to work with. And she's pretty. And you think she's pretty good? And she's athletic. And we just have good matches. And she makes me want to, like, bring my A game. But when we're outside of the ring, she just has all the answers to everything. She knows all the answers. She can solve world problems in two minutes. She... Any sort of thing you... She just... It's, like, it's so much sometimes. It's, like, we were... I... I wasn't traveling with her, but we were, I pulled over after a, a raw, we were driving and I pulled over to, into a gas station to get a drink and Summer was in there with her riding partner and she was like dancing in the aisles of the gas station. And it's like, turn I, it down. Just turn it. Just, it's like, you're, you're not, you're not with Fandango. You're driving from raw to SmackDown and now you're in the gas station dancing. <laughs> getting a snack. What are you doing? And it's like you're trying to get attention. And that's what I feel like all the time is that she's always, always trying to get attention. And so while I respect what she does in the ring, it's like tone it down a notch. Be normal. Be real for two seconds. Okay. Well, now I have to slap myself, though, because now we're eight minutes in and we've been almost talking Total Divas the whole time. Hold on. Let me get my life together. <laughs> um, let, where do we start with? Sunday, WrestleMania? No, absolutely not. Where do we start with your first memory of, I mean, you were born into it. What year are you born? 82. 82. So your dad is transitioning from Stampede to WWF? Yeah. That's a right around that yeah. time, right, yeah, that yeah. they're moving over there. Um, so by the time you're cognizant of anything at, what, six or seven years old? Yeah. You were basically too young to remember. You don't remember the first few WrestleManias. No, but I remember, wrestling, I think it was 1987, the Bulldogs versus, I know the yes. Heart Foundation was not behaving during that match. Yes, of course um, not. That was that was the heel. That was then they yeah. were very bad. By the way, that's when I fell in love with the Heart Foundation. I was in love with them as heels. Yeah. That, I was, that, was, that was, was my favorite. My fav I think that was my first WrestleMania moment like that I can remember. Are you, were, you weren't there, were you? No. You weren't there. So by the time you're really kind of cognizant, things are changing already and Brett's becoming Brett. Yeah. Right. Is that is that right? Yeah. And um, and then your dad's career is sort of interesting and it bounces around and the yeah. Bulldogs get reunited and the, the Hart Foundation gets reunited. So what are some of those early memories, though, as a child of what wrestling is? And was it was it all as your dad or was it some of it through your uncles? How, how were those early memories? Yeah, I just remember being around it my entire life. Always, always, always around wrestling, talking about wrestling. My grandfather ran Stampede Wrestling. My uncles were all involved in it. 
you know, my dad, Davey, the British Bulldog, as you guys know, Dynamite Kid, um, my Uncle Owen, Brett, my whole family. It was just like we had a wrestling ring in our yard. And we actually, growing up, I had um, my cousins and I and TJ, we had our own wrestling promotion. My cousins, Teddy Hart and Harry Smith and TJ Wilson, a.k.a. Tyson Kidd, and myself and my other cousins, um, we had this promotion called the Kids Wrestling Association. So we had it in my grandfather's backyard, and I was just a kid. I, I was like seven, eight, nine years and you, old. And you and TJ are on the same age? And TJ, TJ is two years older than me. So basically, we had this Kids Wrestling Association called the KWA. We, did, we had our own shows. We put them on in the yard. Owen would be teaching TJ how to do Hurricane Ranas on Harry, and Owen was always trying to teach us how to do flips and stuff. But... Um, we, we just had this awesome, you know, relationship with wrestling. And my grandfather, who has a dungeon in their basement to train in, you know, and then on, in our yard, we had a wrestling ring. So I You're was, too young to remember when the bear was around, though. Uh, yes, way you, you, too you're, The bear didn't lick didn't your feet. You were, the, like, the yeah, bear. I okay. wasn't even alive then. But, <laughs> but so we had our own wrestling promotion, and it was called the KWA, and we just, we've loved it since we were little okay, kids. Okay, and were you and TJ always into each other no, as little kids? I hated TJ until I was like 16. TJ and I were friends, but he just irritated me beyond belief. Okay, now here's the thing. I said this to my wife yesterday, and she disagreed. It's, by the way, it's hilarious, and this is the one thing I love about Total Divas, that my wife and I can have this conversation. Like, appreciate this. Last night, we, um, I'm dear friends of Mark Henry, so we have to meet up with Mark and in the hotel. Um, I, say, I see TJ. I don't know TJ, but, you know, I see him walk by, and my wife comes up and is like, there's TJ. <laughs> And I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, honey, if you had come up to me like two years ago and pointed out Tyson Kidd, I would have been like, how do you know that that's Tyson Kidd? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Actually, in fact, I go, I go, well, I saw Tyson Kidd earlier, but I was like, sorry. Yeah. And I was like, Tyson Kidd? And she's like, I'm like, no, no, TJ. She's like, oh, TJ. Yeah, because TJ from the reality show, it's like TJ and I, would, we went to New York to film something and we were there walking through Times Square. Nobody knew me as Natalia. Everybody was like, Natty. They would come up to TJ on the street. I know him as TJ now. And uh, they weren't even noticing me. They were like, TJ. And it's like, they, even at the gym, people were coming up to him being like, what do you think about Jarrett and what's going on? And like, it's because Total Divas airs over and over and over again. I know. And it does so much help you guys. Okay, so hold on. We're yeah, getting off does. track. I love it. Love it. Love so, it. so, so uh, at some point, it's because I said to my wife last night, I go, I the relationship's slightly incestuous in that you guys not literally but right. in that you guys were kind of family-esque well he was just he's of, a neighbor tj tj was um kind of grew up in a his mom was a single mom and he didn't ever had never met his dad and so our family kind of took him in and so he was like a close family friend and um but you know he was so close to us we just spent so much time with him that i've known him since i was a kid but i didn't feel anything for him at all he just he was trying to be like my cousin teddy hart all the time when he was a kid and anybody that knows yeah, teddy I know, hart i know and i know teddy hart quite well wild teddy and, is um what you would call an insane person and well tj was tj was cocky that's what that's what the word is he's, Teddy's also quite cocky tj would try to be very cocky when he was like 10 or 11 or 12 like and i was just, is teddy Ugh. older than tj they're the same age same age so anyway long story short when i was like 15 16 i ended up kind of like be getting to be closer to TJ, but like still friends. And then when I started learning how to wrestle, um, when I was 18, TJ was the first person that I started wrestling with. And I didn't realize that he kind of had this crush on me. That's why he was so eager to train me. Well, so that's he, kind of an awesome way if you have a crush on someone. You want to know the first move I learned how to do? It wasn't a headlock takeover. It was a dragon rana, which is a, it's what Ray would do. It's like a front flip onto the person's shoulders into a hurricane rana on TJ. And, and you guys were practicing it in the dungeon, or where were you doing we this? We practiced it at our studio. We had our own studio um, when we were doing a show called Mat Rats. But we oh, practiced. you did Mat Rats, too. I did Mat Rats. I trained in the dungeon. I mean, we do lots of stuff in the dungeon, but the dungeon was with my uncles, Bruce and Ross Hart, when they were um, running Stampede Wrestling, and it was very, like, basic stuff. But um, we would, when we were with Ted, he'd always want me to do, like, high flying and stuff Who, like that. Who's the craziest heart? I mean, Smith is, Smith. no, Smith is hands down crazy. Yeah. Do you see Smith often? Every six months or so when we go to Toronto or Calgary, I'll see him. But he's definitely the craziest. But they're all crazy. But they're all, but I mean, I'm, I'm, can I keep it totally funky honest with you? Yeah. 100%. I'm obsessed with the hearts. Obsessed. Read everything. <laughs> I've read I've read a lot. The hearts are crazy. And then yeah. I've gotten to know the hearts. Yeah. Um, Teddy's been to my home multiple times. Uh, I've, I've gotten to know Brett. They're very warm um, and kind. But there's also a streak of crazy through the hearts. You are half heart, half heart 
Neidhart. Which makes me compound crazy. Well, is that better or worse? Is it better? Well, how's your dad's Actually, side? My dad is really like as crazy as my dad is. He's and that's crazy. He's like more normal. He's actually very reserved. My dad, before my dad ever got to WWE, my dad played for the Dallas Cowboys. Yeah, he was a football player. Raiders. He was a world class shot putter. He went to UCLA on a full scholarship. My dad's a really cool person. Like he got adopted into the heart crazy yes. land. He got adopted into heart crazy land. You throw my dad, Dynamite Kid, the British Bulldog, Brett, yes. Owen, Stu. It's wacky. Who was now? I know Owen. Owen, who's I'm. Um, you know, I, obviously, I just have so much love for Owen. Right. Right. Um, but ha- had his crazy side too, more in a fun-loving, crazy, pranky yeah. way. Was Owen on the more normal end, though? Would you say he was on the more normal end? More normal. But Owen, you, didn't, you wouldn't go all the way normal still. Not totally normal. But Owen and Brett were more normal and controlled, and they weren't quite, like, crazy Smith crazy. Right. Well, Brett's but, reserved. Um, but Brett but, is... Brett is... I can't even... They're just... I, I don't know. They're a very unique bunch. They're it, so unique that I feel like I couldn't imagine myself having any other family than them because... They're so loyal. Like, you know, it's funny. I know in the past, Brett and Ric Flair have had their issues. But yesterday, when I saw Brett, he told me the person he was the most excited to see was Ric Flair. He's like, I can't wait to see Rick. Really? And it's funny. That's super nice. Oh, I they've had like, words for each other a million times. Oh, I know. And But it was the last NXT we were at. Brett went to NXT, and I'm obsessed with NXT. It's um, awesome. I love going down there. It's like it's like a day off. It's like fun. It's like a spa. I love it. And, um, <laughs> and uh, a wrestler spa. And um, Brett was down there at NXT Arrival, and he had had a nice talk with Ric Flair. And um, it's funny because I always thought there was, like, a little bit of tension between them. Well, Brett, like, had this newfound love for Rick, And, like, I had a match with Rick's daughter, Charlotte, um, and it was around the anniversary of um, Rick's son's passing. And Rick was just so – they were just – everybody was just so incredible. And Brett and Rick just had this wonderful conversation, and – Brett just like and it just basically shows that this is a brotherhood. We have our beef. We have our moments of like. Argh. Well, then I'm sure also after Rick went through what he re- went through, yeah. and Brett's been through so much that you know there, sometimes there's weird things that bring people together. You yeah, know? and it's like it was really cool to see them unite. And it's funny because I'm doing a lot of media today, and I've answered so many of the same questions. And this interview truly has like, like rejuvenated me. Oh, for the rest that's of the day. so like, kind. Because I was getting a little. I, I about, I'm running on like two hours of sleep. Oh, well, no, I could see. You, I could see that you went into your default question mode. You had it. You had your answers. Your, your you, questions in your chat. This has been like. What oh, that's I needed awesome. Today, it's I'll tell great. you. I'll tell you an awesome thing about your uncle Brett. Um, I'm just Bre- gonna wait until they pull me away from you. No, that's fine. Good. Uh, okay. I, I, unless I, they. <laughs> I, 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 you were who I was waiting for today. Um, your uncle Brett, when uh, a few years ago, my brother-in-law passed away. And he was 18 years old. And it was my first experience with anything like this. And he was a wonderful kid named Spencer. Wonderful kid. And um, I came back to town. My, my wife and I went to, to go home, obviously. And my wife had to stay home. I stayed for a week back in Washington. And then I had to return to work. So I went back to New York a week after he passed away. And I was by myself. And my wife was with her family. And I, I had been spending the last week kind of holding them up yeah. as best I could even though I'm kind of grieving this loss as well. And then I get back and I'm by myself and I really, I know this may sound crazy, I I really didn't know what to do. I was kind of struggling and I had gotten to know Brett maybe a year earlier, uh, something like that. And I called Brett and I just said, I'm going through this situation, I'd, I'd love to talk to you, but I know I don't know you that well. And your uncle talked to me for like a half an hour, 40 minutes, just about the experiences of losing people and what yeah, he'd gone through. Crazy. And he was just really wonderfully, because I thought, I know it's really weird, but I'm like, well, who do I know who's been through something like this? Oh, this guy who happens to be one of my idols and I happen to have his phone number, so right. I might as well call and ask. And he was just so wonderful and, oh and God, warm. That's awesome. Yeah. That's he a was a great story off to tell Brett. Yeah. He's, he's a, he's an amazing, he'll remember me. He was, he's an, he's an amazing guy. Um, so, do you remember, I, I, without going too dark, but now that I've already went started a dark path, might as well finish it out. Do you remember the night Owen passed? Um, I do remember it, and I, you know, we were with, we were in Calgary, and we were at my uncle Davy's house watching the pay per view. Actually, Davy was out at this point. Um, Davy was out. He was uh, he was um, taking a little hiatus, but we were there, and um, yeah, I mean, it was just really surreal, you know, going through all that and stuff, but. I think our family, it, it really united us. You know, we pulled together and got through it. And, you know, it was just, it took a long time for our family to get get through all that and heal. And then, but, then that, but that wasn't it for you. I mean, as a kid, you had to deal with 
I mean, even growing up, what happened to uh, Davy eventually? I mean, there, there's a, it's a lot. Yeah, we lost my cousin Matthew. Um, well, he that, actually that, passed away from an incident that happened in the ring. When you were when he was a kid. When he was a kid, he was part of our kids wrestling association. Um, Matt was 13 when he died. And, and how died old were you? 14. Oh. So he he was very close to me, and we he he died of the flesh eating disease, but it was sort of triggered by something that kind of happened in the ring. And so, um, and you guys were all close. Wasn't Owen close with him as well? Very, ever? very close. Owen actually took care of all Matt's funeral expenses because he didn't want Matt's parents to even have to worry about it. So Owen like stepped in and stepped up and took care of it all. And so you got from an early age, you did learn. It's 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 just interesting. Another thing that makes your family interesting yeah. is that you're so in love with this business, and it's it's what makes you guys you. You couldn't change right. that. But at the same time, you've gone through these incredible tragedies as a result of the business. Yeah, I mean, it's just life. Life just happens, and you just kind of have to roll through it. And that's, I mean, it's tough, but our family is really resilient. And hopefully, you know, hopefully one day soon, Owen will be inducted into the Hall of Fame. I think that will happen soon. Uh, one more thing about uh, craziness when it comes to the Hart family and relations. Do you do you remember Dynamite Kid at all? When you talk about the craziest, yeah. there's talk yeah, yeah. of him being up there for the craziest. Yeah, he was, he was um, married to my aunt... Um, Michelle and um, they're not married anymore, but Dynamite was, you know, part of the family. I mean, he was, you know, a very big staple of Stampede Wrestling, and he's a great guy. But um, he, so he was, he didn't come off as like dark and weird when you well, were a kid I that you recall. I mean, I think he had his moments where I think I think he was in a lot of pain. He was. In, in I think he was in a lot of pain because his style was so incredibly physical that he was going through something that none of us really even understood. And I mean, he was so he's so interesting too because he was so amazing. And then he seems so a little amazing. bit tortured when you go back and read about it. It seems like he went through a lot as so, well. Yeah, he. And if you, I mean, I enjoyed his book a lot. I haven't, I haven't read the book. Is it, is it? I know. It, I, I really want to. My buddy Goldstein has. I need to read it. And it's funny because Daniel Ryan was here earlier and talking about. And all the greats you talk to will still tell you yeah. how much they want to emulate Dynamite Kid. He's so good. He's pound for pound. You think he's the greatest? I think he is. Um, you, th- by the way, and uh, I mean this is obviously the biggest compliment ever. You have a little bit of that snap in your suplex. I do. I, I do you took di- it from him, I mean, right? Yeah. I do to. that Dynamite Kid suplex for Dynamite Kid. I always I call it that. I think, like, I just channel that energy. How do you do it? And, 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 and is it incumbent upon the, the person taking it, doing anything, or is it really all about how hard you snap them? Because it really is harder than most suplexes look. I really just try to throw them as hard as I can. And snap is all in the hips. It's all the hip. It's all the hip. And they don't mind it. it does, it's not much of a difference for oh, them. they don't have a choice. <laughs> Once you start, it's just going? It's everything with me. I'm very, very physical. And I know what we do is entertainment, but at the same time, I, I trained in the dungeon. Are you tra- known for working stiff? I, um, I'm, I'm really physical. And I think don't that... Want to, is using the word stiff bad? Was that, does that come off as bad if someone says you work stiff? Um... It's not good, but it's not. I'm very just. I'm. If your technique is good, you have nothing to worry about. But it's like, like I said, look at Ronda Rousey in her in her fight. She comes out unscathed. You know, she usually has no marks on her face, nothing. Like I feel like if your technique is good, you'll be fine. But when I'm in the ring and I perform, I bring it, and there's no fooling around. And it's about the, I bring the dungeon to you. If you've never been in the dungeon, I'll bring it to you. <laughs> That's so a, that's a great. You might want to start. You might want to run with that. Yeah. Sort of like oh, that. Oh yeah, no. My my t-shirt says that. Made in the dungeon. Hey, wh- where is your t-shirt? My my t-shirt is actually like, apparently it's back ordered on WWE. Yeah, because we went to my wife. So as we're preparing for our yeah. trip here, my wife goes. And my wife's going all in with me, even though yeah. she she goes. Oh, well, I need my t-shirt. So we go on, and she goes. I want one of the girls, and so the ones she likes are you, Trinity, and the Bellas. None of you guys had shirts available. On WWE. Shop. None of you. We had to get her. We got her a world strongest, a bent on destruction. Mark Henry small, you know, oh. small shirt. We couldn't get your. Um, with the shirts of right now, from what I understand, they're back order. But they do exist. Um, they do exist. But I mean, the fact that the shirts are being sold so fast. I mean, that has sold to be. Out, I mean, come on. Like they were sold out in Europe, and they've only been on Shop.com for a couple of weeks, and now they're back ordered on WWE Shop. So I mean, they're getting more, but the shirts have been doing really well. Hey, I asked the Bellas about this. Got to ask you. You impressed with what they've been doing? Yeah, actually, I've been saying that the Bellas are my biggest competition. Um, I'll let you go because you guys probably want to talk to Cesaro too. He's, he's pretty good too, but yeah, um, but yeah, I I love we'll talking wrap, to you. We'll, we'll, we'll wrap up, but um, <laughs> I don't want to take your time up. But yeah, the Bellas, I'm they work hard, and that's the thing that I'm waiting to see that from. Uh, keep going, keep going. No. I'm waiting to see that from our Divas champion. I'm waiting to see. I'm not saying she doesn't work hard. I just want to see something different. I don't want to see just skipping. 
I don't want to see a head turn and I don't want to see a sleeper hold. I want to see something else. And so granted, she is by numbers the most successful Divas champion in the history of WWE thus far. But the Bellas are always trying to do different stuff. They're trying to always up their game. And in a lot of ways, and I love the Japanese style, Joshi style of women's wrestling. Of course. The Bellas are kind of trying to do that. They're trying to be more physical and more intense and like bring your inner Ronda Rousey. I love it. And you I know, don't just rely on a skip because you never know when we get tired of that skipping. And then what get, and what are you gonna do when the you know, skip and is that's gone? The thing is that it was great when it was great, but now it's time to evolve and change. And I want to, I, and like Owen used to say, enough is enough, it's time for a change. So with that being said, I'm ready to... We stop, know what you're ready to stop, do. Stop, drop, and tap some <laughs> beep, beep. We know, what, we know what you're trying to do. All right, Natty, thank you so much.